right, we're going to do Weather for Weather Geeks on this Wednesday evening, even though the weather is busy, it's active. Severe weather in terms of damaging winds and tornadoes and large hail. Not necessarily all that likely in the near term, so we've got some time to squeeze in the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video this evening. And boy, today has not gone exactly as we thought it would. Uh, the computer modeling has been terrible over the last 24 hours, um, and so we've been playing catch-up all day. Uh, with the weather. And here's just a sampling of where we've been so far in terms of rainfall totals. These are just a handful of rain gauges. Uh, there's going to be some higher amounts, certainly. But uh, in our rain gauge network, generally speaking, still under an inch in some of these rain gauges, but the Doppler radar estimates are quite a bit higher in some spots. In fact, a flood advisory was issued for a good chunk of Mahoning County a little while ago. Uh, some radar estimates here around the Boardman Canfield area of over an inch, and that includes uh, in areas up near uh, Warren as well. So kind of that zone from the 224 corridor up towards 422. Uh, we've done pretty well with rainfall there, and the amounts get even higher once you're up into northwestern Trumbull County. Some radar estimates up here near Mesopotamia and Bristol, Bloomfield area, of uh, 2 inches plus. And uh, flood advisories also out for other parts of northeast Ohio tonight. A flash flood warning out in Lake County. I don't think we're done seeing flash flood warnings across the area just yet tonight. I, I think there'll be more issued by the National Weather Service before the night is through. Now, I'm recording this video at 7.14. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a respite from the heaviest of the rain. I've got a lot of comments about the nearly continuous lightning and thunder, especially the thunder. It's been just a continuous rumble for a couple of hours now. And the reason for all the thunder, it's not really a big mystery. It's just because there's just so much lightning, just a tremendous amount of lightning with these storms. Let's real quickly just show you the lightning data. And I'm going to query this, and, and the lightning extends from northeast Ohio and western PA up to uh, the southern end of Lake Huron in over 1,300 strikes in uh, the last handful of minutes. And the problem that we are going to run into tonight is these storms are not making much progress. They're going over the same areas again and again and again, and that raises the possibility, even the likelihood, of some flooding issues. When we put on the lightning loop just for the last hour, you can see the lightning is kind of lined up almost in the same areas. Uh, there's just not much in the way of forward momentum with these storms. Uh, so we've seen the storms forming over the southern tip of Lake Huron and extending down across Lake Erie and into northeast Ohio and uh, parts of northwest PA as well. This is all lining up along a very sharp thermal gradient across the Great Lakes. We'll show you the temperatures in just a moment, but uh, we want to note that there is a flood watch in effect for all of our five county television viewing area and surrounding counties to the north and to the east as well. Check out the thermal gradient though across the uh, region. This is pretty impressive. I mean, upper 80s to lower 90s in central and southwest Ohio, we've been in the rain cooled 60s for the last handful of hours because of the rain that pushed in this afternoon. It's pushing 100 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin this evening, 95 in Chicago. That heat dome across the middle of the country is trying to come east a little bit. Um, but it's meeting some resistance in a very, very tight thermal gradient has set up and has been the impetus for these storms. Now, we started talking about the uh, possibility of thunderstorms tonight, yesterday evening. The, the stuff that erupted this afternoon and continues into early this evening, that was a little bit uh, of a surprise. The, uh, again, the, the modeling has been pretty terrible, uh, ver having a very hard time getting a handle on these features. I think I mentioned in Weather Geeks last evening that the, the modeling struggles in these situations, and we saw that come to fruition today, certainly. Now, I'm going to show you a high-res model for the rest of this evening and into the overnight, but again, take this with a grain of salt because the modeling, even in the short term, is not doing great. Uh, taken literally, this modeling would suggest that this nearly stationary band of storms still exists somewhere across northern Ohio, maybe far northwestern PA, uh, midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, eventually, while the details might be a little bit fuzzy over the next 12 hours, eventually this is going to fade away. It may take until almost daybreak tomorrow morning, but I think eventually it'll push far enough to the south and west and also weaken a fair amount that by the time we get to 7, 8, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., when a lot of people head off to work and school on Thursday morning, uh, we should be in better shape in terms of the weather. Um, but the damage may have been done overnight. So flooding is our chief concern. I'm not going to be surprised if we see some local rainfall amounts uh, with this event totaling three, four, five inches, um, given what the setup is. Um, and I just showed you some radar estimates. We've already seen up to a couple of inches. We might see another couple or a few inches in parts of the area over the next uh, nine to 12 hours. 
Secondary threats with these storms overnight, uh, damaging wind gusts and an isolated tornado. Now, the flooding threat, I think, is by far and away our biggest concern. But there's enough wind shear in the atmosphere that we can't discount the possibility of some strong winds, and we can't totally discount the possibility of an isolated tornado with this activity. But we really want to concentrate a little bit more on the amount of rain and the possibility of flooding. Now, whatever happens over the next 9 or 12 hours, it's just going to turn hot and humid on Thursday. We should be primarily rain-free from the mid-morning hours through a good chunk of the afternoon. That will allow temperatures to warm up to about 90 in many spots with a heat index value maybe getting into the upper 90s to near 100. Take it easy if you've got to exert yourself outdoors Thursday afternoon. If your job involves working outdoors, uh, if you are you know, a runner, if you usually run in the afternoon, if you exercise in the afternoon for outside for whatever reason, um, just be prepared for a really stifling afternoon on Thursday. Thankfully, it's not going to last very long. Now, the next thunderstorm threat probably materializes towards tomorrow evening into parts of tomorrow night. Um, and with that will come probably a severe weather risk. Now, it may be very conditional. Uh, we may see a pocket of relatively stable air trying to have an influence over our area for a good chunk of the day tomorrow. Um, but it's going to be possible that some heavy gusty storms get going again towards tomorrow evening into the overnight. The SPC, Storm Prediction Center, has us in the level one risk of severe weather with this activity. Same threats basically apply. There might be a lower flooding risk maybe a somewhat higher wind and isolated tornado risk late tomorrow, tomorrow night, but it's it's a low confidence thing at this point. Now again, taking with taking uh, everything I'm showing you with a grain of salt, here's a look at some of our modeling. As we go into the day Thursday, the sun breaks out, it gets really hot and humid in the afternoon, should be mostly clear late afternoon, very early evening, but towards mid to late evening, increasing chances for some showers and some thunderstorms that may take us into the wee hours of Friday morning. But the timing on this pretty good for high school football Friday evening. This first front really doesn't have much of an air mass change with it, a subtle one. It's going to be a little less humid, a little cooler Friday afternoon as compared to Thursday afternoon. And again, I think we're dry for high school football Friday evening. This is the, this is the front, Saturday's front, that has the more pronounced air mass change with it. Um, and with this will come lower dew points and a dramatic reduction in the heat levels by Saturday afternoon and certainly by Sunday. So this is the front that we're going to really look forward to, this front that rolls through on Saturday. So the heat index, upper 90s on Thursday, still not that comfortable Friday with heat index values well up into the 80s, but you know, that's not all that uncommon for the summer season around here. And then beyond that, we don't expect heat to really be much of a story from the weekend into early next week. Don't forget, uh, 21 WFMJ, always a proud sponsor of the Panerathon, great event in Youngstown, kicking off mid to late morning on Sunday, and won't be that hot this year. Um, might be a little fog Sunday morning. But that should burn off fairly quickly, leaving us with a sunny sky for a lot of the afternoon and temperatures rising from the upper 50s through the 60s and into the 70s by Sunday afternoon. So again, just recapping what we can expect for the next 12 hours. Uh, we'll be talking about this on social media and certainly tonight on 21 News at 11. The latest radar images showing you where these storms are lining up, where the flood threat may be highest, and where a low-end severe weather risk in terms of, of hail and wind might materialize. Thanks to everyone who's been sending me pictures and... Uh, comments on social media. Gotten a lot of pictures of small hail that we've seen, uh, lots of shelf cloud pictures, um, pictures of very turbulent skies after a gust front or a shelf cloud moves through. You get a very turbulent looking sky. We sometimes refer to that as the whale's mouth in in uh, the weather enterprise. Uh, I've gotten a few good pictures of that. And thanks to everyone who's been uh, kind of keeping me up to date on what they're witnessing out there. And I think a lot of people have been witnessing a huge amount of thunder for the last several hours because again these storms are really electric so make sure you're following me on all the social medias uh, for the rest of this evening i'll keep you up to date and if you're up late tonight check us out on 21 news at 11 jimmy wendelek will uh, have the early risers we'll have the update for them first thing tomorrow morning on wfmj today